Hi, I'm DJ Six Smith. You're watching The Sit Down. Wilson Cruz here with us. Brand new docu series Visible out on television. What's up, man? Nice to meet How you. How are you? Good nice to have you here. Me. So we're here in New York. Brooklyn guy, New York yeah. guy. Why don't we wind it all the way back first? Tell me about growing up in New York. What are some of your favorite memories? Well, I split my time between New York and LA. So I was already, my family moved to California. I shouldn't say LA, it was California by the time I was in my teens. But we, my parents grew up here in Brooklyn in Greenpoint. I was born in Brooklyn Hospital. We were in Queens when I was in, until first, second grade. First, second grade. Um, and then we moved uh, to Michigan of oh, all wow. places. But I have literally split my entire life between California and New York. So, um, you know, as an adult, I, I've, I've split my entire adulthood between California and New York. And now Brooklyn? Actually, I'm spending this, the, the rest of this year between California and New York. Yeah, what's it like balancing that? Um, I, don't, you, I don't actually have a home anywhere right now. Which so. is such a weird thing, which is like not uncommon for people no. in the business. I'm basically homeless again, <laughs> in a different way. You're like, cool, thanks um, guys. Yeah. Uh, no, so when I'm doing Star Trek in Toronto, I live in Toronto those seven to eight months. Yes, it takes that long. Yeah, and, it's a beast um, of a project. It's a beast. And we just finished up, and then uh, the hiatus is usually about six months, so I'll spend three months in L.A., and then I'll spend three months in New York unless some other project takes me elsewhere. But, you know, I'm single. I don't have a dog. I don't even have a yogurt <laughs> in the refrigerator. There's no plant that I need You're to good. take care of. Yeah. I'm like, just, I'm going to go where I need to go. Just roll it out and see what happens, right? Yeah. It's working so far. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, you know what, but for right now in your life, it's a good chapter. For now, yes. Well, speaking of different chapters, this project kind of mm. opens you up to a whole different world and stuff that is kind of similar and different. So what was the most fascinating part to you about this whole thing? <sighs> I think what, what, the, what I loved about the experience was that we gave these people who risked everything, um, some of them their lives and their livelihoods, an opportunity to tell us what that experience was and why they were willing to go there. Um, for me, you know, I knew on a personal level the costs, mm -hmm. right, and the demands of um, being first, right, of what responsibility comes with that. And I knew that there were other people who shared those responsibilities within their own communities. So I think of like Candace Kane, who played mm -hmm. the first trans regular character on TV, or Laverne Cox on Orange is the New Black, or Janet Mock, and um, Billy Porter, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, these people who l took a leap of faith. And, um, and they did it not just for themselves, but for an entire community. And I wanted to hear from them uh, firsthand what that meant to them. And you, in the end, get to see these very vulnerable conversations, these vulnerable interviews from people who really opened up for us. Um, but you know, the, the most fascinating part was learning about the times before, totally. you know, that, yeah. that I didn't live through, but that generations before me have that paved the way for me. Um, learning about the Army McCarthy hearings and the fact that the first time the word homosexual was actually used on TV was during those hearings. It's crazy. It's yeah. nuts. It's insane. Um, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a pretty uh, savvy history buff, and when you look at our history books, when they teach the Army McCarthy hearings in school, they never mention the, the Lavender Scare. They talk about the Red Scare, they don't talk about the Lavender Scare. Um, and I think that's an important part of our history. You know, what we did to people's lives um, at that point is pretty devastating. Mm. Um, and it's a part of our history and we need to, we need to learn it. Um, but you know, then, I, then in that same episode, you talk to somebody like Tim Gunn. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to get colorful you know, <laughs> repartee it from was Tim Gunn, and he that. came and just laid it out. He it was, was like, like a therapy like, session. Yeah. He let his guard completely him down. For too. Yeah. And it was heartbreaking. You know, we hear about what it was like, right, mm -hmm. for people, um, and we can imagine. But to hear firsthand of the physical and emotional abuse that he suffered under his father, mm -hmm. um, the fact that they sent him to conver conversion therapy and, and psychiatry and just because he was playing with dolls, right? It's Let the boy insane. play with the doll. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was the most, that, that, for me that was the most fascinating. And, and hearing someone like Ellen DeGeneres, who mm -hmm. we've, we've heard her story for many years, some of us lived through right. it, but I don't think any of us really understood the toll it took. Um, the sacrifices she made, everything she lost and had to rebuild um, in order to be who she is today. So um, 
yeah, those were the most fascinating parts for me. When you rewatch that scene with Ellen, you can tell that she's a little hesitant to even say the line. She knows it's coming. I know. And I've seen it now a few times, and I'm like, oh my gosh, she realizes how much of it is about to change. It's so, about to change. Yeah. yeah. So what were some other little interesting rewatches, whether it was that scene or some other previous television scenes where you're like, I didn't realize this in the moment fully, but now I get it. Hmm. Because like the Norman Lear stuff to me was really interesting. Right. right? You know, I think you know what's interesting about that for me mm -hmm. is how Norman Lear talks about Edith. Yeah. That they were very mindful that they treated Edith as, uh, when they were writing Edith, they would write her as, what would Jesus do? Mm. And that Jesus would <laughs> weep over the way we treated, or we still treat in many ways, uh, LGBTQ people, um, especially at that time. And for them to put the, the most beloved character, to have Norman Lear put his most beloved character in the position to be feeling such empathy and sympathy for this character. He was the first person to write LGBTQ characters from a sympathetic point of view. Mm -hmm. um, and that changed everything. Um, so yeah, I think about that. I think about Mark Siegel, who's an activist, yeah. who, you know, right here at the Tiffany Network. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, surprise, you know, he, showed up on Walter Cronkite's um, evening news um, to start a dialogue, right? People are like, why would, you, why would you disrupt an evening news? Well, after he did that, after he just sh popped up on Walter Cronkite, people had, were, had to talk about what happened, and mm -hmm. they had to talk about why he would do that, which was to bring attention to a community that was completely invisible and ignored, and say, you are ignoring us on your network. We are part of this culture. Mm -hmm. we are, our lives are, should be part of your broadcast, and you're ignoring us. Um, and he was forcing them to, to take notice. Um, so stuff like that, I think, when I see that now, it, um, it fills me with pride, right, mm -hmm. and, a, and a sense of gratitude because they did that for me 